At hey, Alex, your favorite trainer with the belt buckle. Today, we're going to go over how to design a program for a 72 year young client who has Parkinson's. If you're not familiar with Shell Fitness, I wrote the book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer, Volume 2, to be out in 2023 this year. I'm at our La Jolla location. We also have West Hollywood and Santa Monica. If you want to become a successful personal trainer, you got to show up. We have the world's best certification. I'm a little biased, but here's why. Because of this, you get to submit case examples for clients that you have, and we're going to help you design the programs. We have an app that you can use. We have an exercise library that's like none other. You get access to fitness professionals, not a textbook or BOSU balls, battle ropes, doing weird shit. We help your clients get results. Ultimately, that builds your confidence so you can turn your passion for fitness into a career. So let's start off with this client that we have. We're going to implement our CCA, which is our core, core accessory. One circuit, core, core accessory, two circuit, and the third circuit will be core, core accessory as well. The core movement patterns are a squat, hinge, unilateral, transitional. Those are all lower body. Upper body will be a horizontal push and pull, vertical push and pull. So obviously, anytime you work with a client, you need to assess them. Now, if this was an inquiry from your gym and you had some information before, I would want to reach out to their doctor, their physician, who would be a neurologist. That's an opportunity for you to help build your network. The average medical professional will think of trainers as a bunch of nincompoops. Why? Because we're doing exactly that. We're doing weird circus shit, and we're not truly helping our clients. We're scaring them. So they're scared to refer to us because they don't want that client to get hurt especially a unique population such as Parkinson's. And so by reaching out to that medical professional, you let them know, I'm a qualified trainer. I would love to come shadow a session and then talk more about a mutual client that we have. And then when can I schedule a time for you to come to my facility and I'll take you through a workout? Because doc, you probably have this misconception that I'm this gold gym t-shirt, dental floss wearing, giant butt, scantily clad individual who has no idea how to actually train, but that's not me, doc. I understand the human body, the average textbook trainer, they understand their body. I make a very big point during that conversation to educate the doctor on what an average certified trainer does. They go to a textbook, we got our NASA, woohoo! We got our ACE, ISSA, it's a textbook that doesn't prepare you for shit. You need to be able to work in an environment where you get to ask questions and then learn by doing. So, Doc, you probably worked with textbook trainers in the past. Yeah, they don't really know what they're doing. If you work with a qualified trainer who goes through an internship and then they get their CPT, you're working with some of the best. And now the physician's like, holy crap, I want to work with you. I'm going to refer you more clients. And you're going to ask the doc, what are some contraindications you have for a client who has Parkinson's? A neurologist is going to work with nerves, the basic unit for the nervous system, neuron. Neurologist is going to work specifically with special conditions like this. And so I'm not going to scare the client when they come in. I'm not going to go, oh, my, you have Parkinson's. Oh, no. My dad's a psychologist. And when I remember when I was younger, one time we were diving down the street, and I saw someone with a special handicap, and I was like, oh, man, that must suck. And my dad said, don't ever say that again. They don't want you to feel sorry for them. That's the last thing that they want, to be a leper. You need to treat them just like you would everyone else. Treat them like they're a human because that's what they are. So when they come in, you smile. You shake their hand. How's it going? We're really excited to help you today. We're going to take you through a great workout. At any time, if something feels off, let me know. We'll regress it to make it appropriate for you. You learn about their goals. What are they capable of? Your mind is going... Oh, Parkinson's, oh, God. we gotta be so delicate. 72, oh my God, they're so old. No, ask questions. What are your goals? What are you trying to improve? What do you like to do? Look around in my gym. What are some things you wanna learn? Are there some muscles that you wanna improve? Yeah, I'm gonna ask a 72 year young Parkinson's patient, client, if they want a big ass. I'll help you get it. Because I understand the human body. And you try to make them smile and laugh and feel comfortable with you. We don't just go right out there and do a bunch of circus shit. 
I have a structure in mind, and it's this. This is the template I have in my mind. When that person comes in and I assess them, then I'm going to fill this in on what's appropriate. So let's start off with some squats. See how you squat. They come in, they sit down, so you already have a pretty good idea what they're capable of. If they come in with a cane, if they have a caretaker, and they're really assisting them. That's all data that's going through and should be formulating in your mind to regress the movements. If they come in and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize that was the person I'm working with. They're a lot more capable. We may start out with a goblet squat. It depends on the individual. That's what the assessment is for, to scream, push. I'm going to start here. And where are they in that spectrum? If they're more regressed, maybe I'll start with a wall push-up. Maybe if they're a little more capable, we go to the ground. Maybe we do a bench press. Depends on the scenario. Then I'm going to do some type of reactive upper body exercise. And this is going to help with challenging the type 2 motor unit for recruitment, which we want. So I'll stand here. I like the little laser lights. Have my client I point the laser on the wall. Right hand. Right hand. Left hand. Left hand. So they need to react with an upper body movement. I, after this one, we rest, and we're going to go back to round two. We're going to add weight every time, make it a little more challenging within the capacity of that individual, and we'll do a third round. It depends on the person, though, because if they are really regressed, we may just do one set. We may have longer rest periods between each circuit, meaning I do my squat, ask questions, learn about them, then do the push, ask questions, get them some water, get them a towel, then do the upper reactive. Wait and then go for round two. Depending on the individual, you may only do maybe one or two of these circuits. Well, let's just say they're a lot more capable than you thought. You get to the first one, now you get into the second one. We're going to do a pull of some sort. You use a band. I always like to bring something with me. Have, have a band. These are great. So universal. You could do a row variation so the trainer holds it and you're pulling this way. You're going to use a neutral grip. It's going to be a lot more lats. You do pronated grip, it's going to be a lot more mid-back. You can do band pull-aparts if you wanted to. Work on the eccentric control. We're not driving through the traps. Are they standing? Are they seated? I'm walking around and showing my value, making sure to cue them properly. A very common competency that you're going to find with a roll or a pull is to go through the traps first. So I'm going to walk behind them. I'm going to push their traps down. Always ask your client before you touch them. We'll let you know, Mr. Jones, I'm going to push your traps down. Is that all right? Great. Great job. Nice. Control it on the way back. These are great. You know, little camo show up bands. Put those on the knees. Again, are they regressed? Are they progressed? Maybe they're sitting down and they're doing some good girl, bad girl exercises. Try to make them laugh appropriately. Or maybe they stand up and they go back and forth. Depends on that individual. These bands are great, too. They're a regressed version from those if you want to put on the knees. But also, you can do some upper body stuff. With that protraction, retraction, as I say, scaps off the back when you push. You can go up, you can do one hand, lots of great things you can do with those. And I also like some type of ball. This is a physical therapy ball, it's about a pound. You could do some reactive drills like this, you throw it back and forth with them. You could put that as the accessory. An accessory, all this means is it's something that is not a core movement pattern. So it could even be a body weight exercise if they're more advanced. In this case, Maybe it's a reactive drill with this. Maybe you have a balloon and you smack it back and forth. If you have a, a blue and a, a white balloon and you throw it at them and you have to smack one of them. Maybe you have cones in front of you and you say the color of the cone as they go forward. Green. Again, it really depends on the capabilities of the individual. I never say things like, oh, now this is a really, really severe situation. Um, we're going to make this really, really regressed. Well, in my mind, I'm calculating that. Smiling, making an enjoyable environment for them. So we do a pull. Now we're going to do a vertical push. With that band, you can press up. If you, if you feel it's appropriate, you can grab a dumbbell. Arnold press. It may just even be mirroring you. So I could look at my client and say, all right. Because in your mind, you're thinking, they're a lot more regressed than I thought. The movement competency of this individual is extremely limited. So we have to start with the very, very basics in the bottom of it. So I'm just doing this range of motion without any load. Depends. Reactive lower, as I just showed you. Complete that for three rounds, and then we'll go to the last one. Do a step up. If they're a little more capable, I would ask them if they're comfortable getting on the ground. You can do a bridge. 
You choose which one. One will be unilateral, one will be a hinge. And we have a suitcase carrier. If they come in with their worker, and they're a lot more capable than I thought, I'm thinking, well, let's grab a little weight. Let's have them walk. And you're right there to support if they need you for balance. Ask the care, wor the care worker if there's someone with them. This is what we're going to do. Uh, one of the exercises I was going to have them do is a suitcase carrier. They pick up a weight and they walk. You think that's going to be appropriate? Should I regress it or progress it to make it more challenging? Gather that data, and they're going to see that as very professional, and they're going to like that. And then end off on some pay loss. So if we're in a seated position, band's coming here, hold, bring it back in nice and slow. Play red light, green light. Green. Red. Shake it a little bit. Try to make them smile. Have them close their eyes if they're seated. If they're standing and you feel like their balance is pretty good, challenge proprioception. I'm going to close your eyes. Spot them appropriately. Put your hands out. I'm right here and your arm's right there. You may have the care, the care worker assisting you as well. So we would do this for the entire workout. We're getting lower body. We're going to get some type of unilateral. Now, do you have to do a squat, a hinge, unilateral, and transitional every single workout? No, just choose a couple of them. As you'll notice that we didn't do a vertical push and pull and horizontal push and pull. I typically like to have a push and a pull and then an upper body one, which would be for your shoulders. You'll hear people say things like, oh, you got to make sure you have a, a two-to-one ratio, pull the push. There's no evidence to support that. If the individual is really tilted up here, you know, they have invisible lap syndrome, like they're all jacked up, yeah, maybe we should emphasize some back if we haven't been doing that in a while. It always depends, and I know that answer can be frustrating, but that's the answer you should be giving. And your confidence is going to grow knowing that you can go into this assessment training any body because you understand the human body, 17 muscles of the shoulder, 20 of the lower body, all the movement patterns and telling us the agonist synergy stabilizer for each one of the movements on the fly in front of someone. That's how we test at Show Up Fitness. That's when you get your CPT. The average textbook trainer, they go to a, let's go to the testing center and look at a bunch of questions, multiple choice, which you'll never see in real life. How can you really think that that's going to prepare you to be a successful trainer. You need the hands-on learning. When you go through our, our CPT, the great thing about it is we teach you how to have a conversation with someone like this and say, you know what, that's a great question. I work with a team of doctors, physical therapists, professors, registered dietitians. I can get that answer back to you in a couple hours. And then you come to the community and you find out the right answer. Coming to a community where... The information provided is on the same level versus you go to YouTube, you go to Google, you get a bunch of fuckery out there. What is right? This person says that. This person says this. So when you come to a source that is the most accurate and it has people that have been doing this for 20 plus years, you know the information that you're getting is accurate. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Please comment, share. Don't throw a shit fit over the volume or the, the echo. I know it's not the best. We're trying. Little by little. If you're in San Diego, Los Angeles, come to our two-month internship in person. Next one starts up January 23rd. If you can't make it in person, we have weekend seminars. And we're online and we have an app. There's no excuse for you not to become a successful personal trainer. 90% of textbook trainers quit within the first year. No shit. You read a textbook. You've never had someone watch you train. That's what we offer. Belt buckle trainer. Check it out. Have a great day, y'all.